good afternoon everyone uh, we would like to welcome each one of you to this uh, special session that is on experience sharing uh, on transfusion medicine clinics we all have been hearing about uh, the concept of transfusion medicine clinics from long uh, we know that uh, uh, we have a confusion whether ours is a preclinical or is it a paraclinical or is it a clinical specialty and uh, we have come to know that recently or maybe in the last few years uh, the, the transfusion medicine department at uh, the medical college hospital kolkata has started transfusion medicine clinics so to give an idea on what has been done there and uh, the, the various clinics that has that has been functioning over there we have faculties from uh, Kolkata Medical College, uh, led by uh, our beloved Dr. Prasun Bhattacharya, sir, who is the professor and HOD uh, over there. And uh, after which, uh, we'll be having uh, some talks by his senior residents, uh, Dr. Arjit and Dr. Sumida Pante. So, all over to you, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's clear, clearly audible. Yeah. Video is working. Yes, sir. It's working. Working. Okay. Fine. So actually, I'm not looking. Uh... Okay. Thank you. Hello. Yes, sir. You can go ahead. We can see you and we can hear you also. Can I go ahead? Yes, sir. Please Good afternoon go. to all of you. Uh, is thank you, Dr. Rafi. Thank you, TM Academic Society for giving us the opportunity on behalf of Medical College Kolkata. It's our pleasure and honor to be on this platform. Thanks to all of you. Myself, Dr. Prashun Bhattacharya, I'm the department. As you know that transfer medicine and its clinical applications, we have started on 6th April 2022 onwards. So on the very beginning, we started uh, going because it is due to some national health missions uh, to get an offer to start the uh, transfusion backup and support for the critically ill patients, especially thalassemias who are having multiple aluminization sickle cell anemia and now i am i can say that initially i was in a doubt initially in a doubt that whether whether this would be possible but last year our performance is almost in our opd the footfall is over 1500 patients and our indoor admission is 617 patients but the foremost thing i should like to introduce our team members uh, Dr. Chikom Maiti, uh, he is assistant professor. Also, he's done diploma in cardiology previously, having clinical experience. On my right hand, Dr. Kushumita, please come forward. Dr. Kushumita Monchi, uh, she is also assistant professor of our department. She is DM in hematology by also, also, we are lucky enough for that because we are having these clinical specialist with us also as our faculty member. She belonged initially, she belonged from pathology. After that, she did DM hematology from uh, Kul uh, Kulkata Nilratun Sharkar Medical College. And also another person who is from the very beginning, Dr. Shayantan and he is also the senior resident uh, during third year, third year resident on our department. So they are the very big, from the very beginning, these persons were with us and also and now Dr. Urijit Dash, mm -hmm. who will be presenting, who will be presenting the uh, case, clinical cases and also Dr. Sumita Pandey, another senior resident. So I'm giving them, uh, giving them over so that Dr. Urijit Dash will be presenting the first clinical case of the M clinic. So over to Dr. Das. Just give me two minutes so that we can put our slides. Okay. Okay, sir. Video. 
Yes, sir. The slides are visible. You can make it full screen also. Hello? Slides are visible. Let me go on the full screen. I think uh, in slideshow, if you press from beginning, I think that would be possible on top. Okay, sir, please go ahead. Okay, yes. Doctor Origin. Uh, yes, sir. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, very good afternoon, all the attendants. I am Dr. Origit Das, uh, senior resident of immunology and blood transfusion from Medical College, Kolkata. First of all, thank you. A very th much thankful to Transfusion Medicine Academic Society for this initiative and give me a chance to share my little clinical experience on Transfusion Medicine Clinic. Uh, I have, I will be discussing two cases from Transfusion Medicine Clinic on e beta thalassemia and its complication. So first, just my new slide.
you can just tap the mouse uh, on the screen. Oh, okay, it's moving. Okay, sir. So my first case uh, on outcome of combination therapy of hydroxyurea and thalidomide in a case transcendent thalassemia. So first, the clinical background of this patient. Uh, it's an, he's a 19-year-old mason, Mr. ABC, residing out Bengal from origin. And he was completely well till six months of age. And following uh, that poor occasional treatment due to uh, symptomatic anemia. He was a case of therapy by hemohypertensive liquid chromatography done at the age of one year, eight months. And his hemoglobin uh, was uh, um, 6.9 gram per DL and uh, MC, MCH also low. Uh, yeah, the left hand side, uh, we can show the HPLC of this patient. Uh, uh, hemoglobin A concentration is 4.3 percent, and hemoglobin A2 concentration is 0.4 percent. So, this is a case of uh, eta thalassemia. So, uh, the, this is chip complaint he painted with in our OPD with chip complaint of increased frequency of transfusion for the last one year and fever with chill during blood transfusion for the last eight months. And there is no history of bleeding manifestation, no history of significant but prolonged fever, and no history, history of any chronic liver disease, and no history of any tuberculosis or malignancy. And the transfusion history, the frequency of transfusion at first, that is one unit PRVC, what to do three months. And the frequency of transfusion at present for last 14 months, that is three unit per month, or the 160 ml per kg per year, uh, and that is last blast transfusion one week prior to the attendance in our OPD. So next come to the dark history. He was on uh, folic acid, 5 mg, uh, um, and calcium, 500 mg uh, once a day, vitamin D3, 400 international unit once a day, and on day on iron therapy, defiracyx, that is 5 mg per kg body weight once a day. And his biochemical parameter at presentation, it is a total bilirubin uh, um, 3.9, GH bilirubin 0.8, and indirect bilirubin slightly high. SGOT, SGPT, uh, 54, 47 unit per liter, and the total protein albumin, urea, tinin, TSH, S, calcium, phosphate are within normal. And his ferritin was slightly high, that is 2430 nanopar ml, and his serology marker of uh, HIV, hepatitis, hepatitis C was non reactive. So on examination, the patient uh, examined in supine position. The patient was conscious, cooperative, well oriented to time, place, and person. And this malacomian is prominent, but there is no is there no instead of malacomian teeth or maxillary overgrowth. And the moderate pallor was present, but cyanosis, jaundice, clubbing, no lymphadenopathy, edema, nil. The neck pain, no engorge. And the pulse, BP, respiration, temperature, vitals within normal limit. And the other system examination was within normal limit. The abdominal and system examination, the abdominal uh, inspection of a distended abdomen is centrally placed but inverted umbilicus. And on superficial palpation, there is no superficial tenderness or rigidity. And on deep palpation, the liver was 8 cm from coastal margin at the from right exmitary line, non tender and soft and smooth margin. And the spleen, 14 centimeter from costal margin, from mid left mid clavicular line, non tender, smooth margin, splinting notch pul was palpable. And the Parkinson, uh, on Parkinson, no fluid still or shifting down less present. And the auscultation, bile sound audible. This coming to the next slide. A total follow up duration of our patient is 1.5 years. So we first uh, um, give for, um, formula based transfusion. That is the, the formula was the desired hemoglobin minus actual hemoglobin into patient body weight into theory by hematocrit of the PRVC unit. And the hematocrit uh, uh, assuming 65% uh, in this case. And that the desired hemoglobin considered as 9.5 gram per DL. Initially, our target to treat P transfusion hemoglobin to achievable, that is 8.5 gram per DL from baseline presentation, the 6.2 gram per DL. And then we also read phenotype match, allo antibody panel match, leukodidus transfusion, usually within seven, seven days of collection. 
and we also introduce higher the patient to hemoglobin F in induction therapy that is hydroxyurea and thyroidomy. So initially we started uh, hydroxyurea that is with monitoring the cytopenia tolerability and the p-transfusion hemoglobin. The after two months, we, we increase the dose to 15 mg per kg. As the p-transfusion will be not achieved to 9 gram per um, the hemoglobin um, reduces the mg per kg. We observe and the p-transfusion hemoglobin achieved to 9.4 gram per dl after two months. And the current regimen may continue uh, increase the to support and the, to increase the effect of on fate anemia. And this is, this is IH workup. This blood is positive. That was negative. Autocontrol was negative. Allo antibody skin and panel. Uh, Allo antibody uh, on identification, anti capital E was found. And the RH scale uh, phenotype, uh, his phenotype was small c, capital E negative. Next, come to slide. Uh, result for uh, any patient and um, um, initial presentation at, at present. So, frequency of transfusion uh, 1.5 years ago, that is one unit per month, and at present, uh, the patient was non, -trans uh, non transfusion dependent. The hemoglobin uh, at presentation, uh, that is 6.3 gram per dl, at present, it is 9.5 gram per dl. And the spleen, also spleen size, liver size also reduced. And serum ferritin uh, also indirectly reduced, that is, for uh, initial presentation, 2430 nanogram per ml to 1553 nanogram per ml. So, and monitoring of other laboratory value as the, as the patient on hydroxyurea and thalidomide, we, we may weekly, first uh, two months, we weekly monitor uh, the MD15 day, first two months, and then um, for the rest of the year, we, we examine, uh, we monitor the value monthly. That is CBC, uh, LFT, and urea creatine. And uh, CBC, LFT um, uh, was urea creatine was within normal limit. And here we saw, so, uh, yeah, here we saw the baseline three months and six months, and at present the value of um, LFT, KFT, and CBC value. So next coming to discussion, the Thalassemia International Federation guideline suggests a formula-based transfusion to calculate the blood volume to be transfused. But in India, most centers consider only the patient weight for calculating the volume of blood to be transfused. Formula-based volume transfusion per visit indirectly lead to increased interval between the visit. And the, uh, there is some uh, modifier in beta thalassemia. There is some primary modifier like hemoglobin beta mutation. And there is, there is some secondary modifier. Secondary modifier include the persistence of uh, hemoglobin F uh, and also the presence of co-inheritance co of alpha thalassemia also directly into the, decrease the severity of so clinical benefit of the increased HBF appeared due to increase uh, in imbalance between beta and non-beta chain also reduce the ineffective erythropoiesis and the hemolysis. So next coming to slide, hydroxyurea uh, actually uh, it, uh, induced the, the 2 9 4 increase in gamma mRNA expression. That's why uh, this uh, increased the HBF in thalassemia patient. But hydroxyurea uh, uh, also uh, uh, inhibit the Deoxyribonucleotide enzyme that is um, uh, inhibit the formation of deoxyribonucleotide type phosphate that is also in, in used in DNA synthesis and repair. So the cell arrest occurred in the space of cell cycle. So uh, thyroidomide also uh, um, next to comes thyroidomide also induces the globin gene expression and increases the proliferation of a, a third cell. And in this patient, we have evaluated the outcome of combination therapy of hydroxyurea and thyroidomide. And we found the significant improvement in median hemoglobin level and the decrease in the transfusion requirement and also the liver and spleen size. So to conclude uh, with the Benson interval, we are able to do the decrease transfusion requirement and increase the transfusion interval, reduce febrile non hemolytic transfusion reaction by leukodepletion and the reduce splenomegaly, hepatomegaly and reduce serum ferritin level and they improve the overall general well-being and performance of the patient. So the take-home passage uh, from this case, uh, the thalassemia is a multi-system disorder requiring comprehensive approach for appropriate management. Appropriate and rational use of packaged cell transfusion can tight over anemia rate of symptom and bone marrow hyperactivity. But judicious use of hemoglobin inducer, uh, it can mitigate transfusion hazard and thereby iron overload. Uh, the, uh, there are other hemoglobin inducer like uh, 
so clinical background of this patient this is he is a was a 56 year old man diagnosis a case of evita thalassemia on oral iron chelation rapiracirox was admitted to our hospital for cup and progressive shortness of breath on exertion without orthopenia for the last 4 month resulting in eastern cooperative oncology group performing status from 0 to 3 zero is a complete uh, full active three is the um, rest of the time that is 50% time confined to the bed um, um, 50% walking hour and his blood transfusion uh, initiated at the age of 6 month and he usually required intermittent transfusion since childhood up to the age of 54 year but he had been regularly transfused on monthly basis for the last 2 years on uh, admission on physical examination we found prominent skeletal changes that is malar prominence present and pallor uh, moderate and the liver uh, on uh, abdominal examination liver palpable liver in centimeter costal margin liver was non tender soft and smooth and the spleen was also palpable that is more huge splenomegaly 15 cm from costal margin non tender smooth margin spleen not palpable and the on chest, um, chest examination the dickis bed sound on the left side of the chest and we found also found the wasting of small muscle of both hand this initial laboratory investigation uh, the hemoglobin was 5.3 g per dl total count 3000 per microliter platelet 152000 per microliter and the absolute dilute of field count that is 1850 per microliter and this liver function test kidney function test ldh was within normal limit and the dat rbc allo antibody screening was negative and the serum ferritin in kids that is 1650 ng per ml and his serology marker was also negative एड्रोपी And on USG whole abdomen, uh, we found the moderate sided valve fusion with cups of left lower low and also part splenomegaly. And we also did the the MRI cervical thoracic spine. This is confirmatory test and investigation of choice for extramedullary hematopoiesis. Uh, we, we found the hematopoietic the medullary involvement with paravertebral soft tissue signal changes in dorsal region with signal with low signal medium signal intensity suggestive of extramedullary hematopoiesis. On further full examination, we found similar uh, normal cytology in normal cell. For such in a uh, patient, the total protein concentration was 3.6 gram per dl, and the LDH level of 130 international unit per ml. So uh, by its criteria, uh, the uh, fluid uh, fluid protein uh, is below uh, 0.6, and the LDH level fluid LDH by serum LDH also 0.61. So it is greater than zero point five. So it is the um, by light criteria. Uh, we conclude that is a exudative pleural effusion, and its ADA was six point three unit per liter. ADA was also negative, and the CB net for pleural fluid was also negative. So TB was ruled out. So intervention done at our center uh, uh, when he is present. Presented uh, initially, his hemoglobin target was set as greater than equal to ten gram per dl, and we started with hydroxy urea. At 10 mg per kg per day, and plan for MRI, uh, repeat MRI spine after one month. Hani received three units of leukodepleted phenotype match pack cell as a hemoglobin 5.2 gram per dl in subsequent six weeks. So uh, he was referred to radiotherapy department for radiotherapy at a lower dose. So after one week of radiotherapy, patient had been in our clinic with spontaneous oral mucosal bleed. On examination, he found weight per pleura. And his CBC uh, hemoglobin was 8.5 gram per dl. Total count severely decreased. That is over 100 to 
and absolute neutrophil count from a severe neutropenia that is 395 micro per microliter and the platelet count also decreased at the 11,000 per microliter. And he was readmitted for this pancytopenia, maybe due to radiation and hydroxyurea. And the neutropenia was resolved after administration of 6 day of uh, granulocyte coronary floating factor, this filigastrin, 10 microgram per kg, and the oral antimicrobial prophylaxis and uh, for opportunity infection. And uh, he received also 20 unit uh, RDP and two unit leukodidus PRDC transfusion during admission. And the uh, hydroxyurea was withheld and he was closely followed up for daily temperature and CBC monitoring. And his cytopenia improved gradually. This is a slide of monitoring of CBC and temperature parameter on P and post radiotherapy. So uh, when you have hydroxyurea prior to radiotherapy, his hemoglobin uh, um, was 8.3 gram per day, but total count ANC, absolute neutrophil count, and platelet temperature within normal limit. After one week of post radiotherapy, day one, when he was present, he present with hemoglobin 8.5 gram per DL, total count decrease. And the absolute neutrophil count of severe neutropenia, platelet count also decreased, temperature 98.4. So, with uh, above inter PBS mentioned intervention, uh, by day seven, uh, we uh, uh, increased the hemoglobin 10.2 gram per DL. Uh, the total count also able to increase uh, to 3000 per microliter. And absolute neutrophil count we are also able to increase 1580 per microliter. And the platelet count 55000 per microliter. So uh, EMH, uh, the presentation of uh, extramatory hematopoiesis in non-transfusion dependent thalassemia with the neurological manifestation like paresthesia, low back pain, is common. But our case presented with recent onset predominant respiratory symptom with wasting of small muscle of pump. Higher hemoglobin maintenance and hydroxyurea therapy could not ameliorate this respiratory distress even after therapeutic fluorosynthesis. So we plan to initiate radiotherapy to reduce the pseudotumor site and reactive plural effusion. EMH is a radio sensitive tumor and low dose that is uh, 3000 centigrade, uh, 950 to 3000 centigrade. So the, um, uh, was, but, but the through the recurrence rate is relatively high, it is 70 to 30 percent. So, the effect of hydroxyurea and radiotherapy that is a also myelosubacy and so, for it is CSN of radiotherapy and high temporal and PMC, RDP support, and inpatient monitor is added life threatening complication. And the at present, the patient was rescheduled for radiotherapy at lower dose. So, hydroxy low dose return has caused a recoverable severe cytopenia in this middle age EBITA thalassemia patient with extramatory hematopoiesis. <laughs> So this is my references. Uh, this is our uh, so transfusion medicine OPD attendance. The average OPD attendance, is, uh, uh, of course, 100 per month. That is uh, last year OPD attendance, January to December. This is our admission. Uh, that's uh, um, also 40% uh, per month the last year, January to December. So my acknowledgement to the immunology of blood transfusion, respect of our sir, respected sir and our junior for being supporting and helping me throughout. And also my acknowledgement to Department of Radiotherapy and Department of Radio Neurology of Medical College Hospital, Kolkata. And this, this is our uh, um, large few picture of OPD and indoor. And the, the um, last um, right side picture shows the patient was given um, and last but not the least, uh, our department has felicitated uh, um, for the for good working. Uh, um, and this um, picture show the our um, entire faculty and, and entire uh, all the team of, of, the, of the pillar of IGBT. Thank you for your kind attention and patient. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That was a uh, few interesting things that has been done at uh, Kolkata Medical College. Uh, we could see the statistics and the photos also. But the certain uh, queries that had come also is, can you give an outline of the type of patients that do come? Uh, I think from the understanding, it's mainly thalassemia and uh, sickle cell or such patients or do you get malignancy also? Uh, just can you outline the 
various patients that come to the clinics. Yeah, am I audible? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, actually, when we planned, it was for hemoglobinopathies. Okay, now we have focused on the cases related to majority of our patients are thalassemia. They are coming. Sickle cell anemia is not so much prominent in our, but the patients are coming from regularly from uh, you know for anemia for investigations. They are referred from other sites. And also patients coming from gynecological OPD also. Recently, we have got an essential thrombocythemia that patient who is about to be still under is a is a comprehensive management for both. It's an indoor patient, of course, will be undergoing um, M uh, MTP. So we are also a part of that team who are doing those treatments. So since it's a multi-specialty discipline. And the plan is to treat the disease, uh, treat the patient, not the disease. So nowadays, initially, when we start, uh, we started. Frankly speaking, I was also in in a doubt whether this, uh, uh, this uh, our venture will be a, uh, will be successful or not. But presently, going through the attendance level of our thalassemia uh, patients. Anemia for investigation patients, even the polycythemia patients. Polycythemia patients are also routinely coming in our center. So these are the major non-malignant hematology patients are now majorly getting the attention. Even the patients are referred from medical OPD, medicine, general medicine OPD, surgical OPD. They are also coming. Even they are discharged from other for anemia for investigation. They are also referred to us. Regarding the donors, we are not getting so much response. The deferred donors are coming, but patients, we are getting a quite a reasonable number of patients, I can say. Okay, sir. The next query is, uh, is it uh, conducted near the blood center itself or is it in a different no, area? No, medical college has its OPD complex. So we are a part of the OPD. Our OPD schedule is as per the schedule, but it is once a week, every Wednesday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. is our OPD schedule. So it is not in the blood center. It is in the main OPD complex. And we have our bed in the building, very building, the blood center where I am speaking uh, from my department. So on the third floor and fourth floor, third floor is the male bed and fourth floor uh, is, enter, uh, is the female bed. So we are given five beds each for male and female, but you will be astonished to hear the demand of bed is so high that even other specialties are releasing because they have their bed vacant. So they are giving it to us. So because so much patients are coming. So that's, that's one of the, I can say that's one of, is a work of all of our colleagues, which I have introduced to all of you so it's due to them so initiation and for the last almost two years is over so i think someone should initiate and i think there are maybe doubts but one of these we are lucky to that it's like we are working in a medical college so it's easier uh so being a medical questions uh, did you face any challenge in getting ip beds for initiation or how did you face that? Because in NNC, no, actually, in no, NNC, for, yeah, for the IP base, uh, for the IP base, actually, it was initiated by National Health Mission. Look the pathetic condition of this uh, this uh, hemoglobinopathy. The patients with multiple aluminization, they requested us. So that may be an added boon to us uh bone to us for that reason so we, we never faced any 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 rather the people are cooperating because transfusion reaction management they are now telling me last just yesterday we had a meeting on transfusion committee discussing that regarding transfusion reaction so we can do can we refer the patients to you this this is the feedback i'm getting so it is encouraging i can say there are two more queries. Uh, whether OPD-based blood transfusions are referred and managed in this clinic? 
Uh, based such as look, these are the issues patient blood management, OPD based blood transfusion. They are not usually mostly you are getting part cases across every corner of the state, rather, that people are coming because they have faced problems, mostly the uh, transfusion, recurrent transfusions, and another thing is that having multiple eliminations they refer. So, for routine transfusion, the patients are not. We are not getting those patients. We cannot cater to them. In a thalassemia, hemoglobin, a thalassemia patient, everybody needs transfusion. So 70 patients, I not give 70, all of them in addition in blood for blood transfusion. So we as routine, uh, we are doing thorough assessment and admitting those who require this care. Otherwise, we are referring to their local center. So it's not thalassemia care unit or TCU, not a, not a daycare center also. Okay, sir. If there are any, any words, uh, you can unmute and ask also. I have, I have made it uh, possible that people can unmute and ask also. Are there any queries or we can go to the second speaker? Yeah, Dr. Aditya. Uh, yeah. Sir, uh, sir uh, sorry, if I, I joined yeah, just now. Because, yes. uh, sir, the kind of patients we are admitting currently in daycare clinic are chronic blood transfusion requiring patients, no, sir. And yes, daycare is one of them that is daycare, but there are patients who require, suppose, intensive iron chelation. So we have to monitor them. There are patients who yes, are not being taken care of. They might require, you know, splenectomy that has not been assessed. So these, those, they yes, are coming to us because by one last one year, I think four or Splenectomy patient, uh, we have uh, we have mobilized four or five patients who undergone splenectomy under our observation. One patient has got a very bad, uh, unhealthy, non-healing leg ulcer. He's a patient of uh, beta thalassemia major. That that patient, e beta thalassemia. And that patient also went on, uh, that patient also went on uh, for skin grafting. Because these are the cases, because thalassemia, we are not treating the, I'm telling you, we are not the part of, we are the managing the patients. That's, that's one of the thing. So the concept is a bit different yes, from thalassemia care unit. Yes, sir. But okay. uh, this is a great start uh, because, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks right. to all of you, because all of you were there to encourage me, I can say from the very beginning. Thanks to all of you. Again, let me introduce another speaker. Shall I go to the second? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. The second case, Dr. Uh, our Dr. Sumita Pandey, she will be dealing with that. Okay, thank you. May I request Dr. Sumita, please come. Yes, you may go ahead. Slides are visible. Dr. Sumita, just speak. Introduce yourself. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you, Transmission Medicine Academic Society. Thank you, Dr. Rofi. And thanks to my all the departmental faculties 
HB, my first Dr. Chipam Maiti, and everybody for encouraging me to do the presentation. It's basically on the case-based discussion. And there is uh, lots of junior, I think there's 65 participants. And I think mostly are junior residents. So for them, I want to discuss the case, but on elaborate. So, so everything, Everything begins with the story. So when a patient comes to our clinic, he told some story. So we have to uh, get the clues for the diagnosis of the patient. And uh, from the history, we get the clue. And there is uh, the laboratory indication. And ultimately, the diagnosis of the case and the management of the case. So how we proceed. So she is a nine-year-old girl. Her Informing her mother, she is reliable by religion. She is Hindu. As per community, she belonged to Bengali civil caste community. And she resided at Katua, West Bengal. By occupation, she is a student. Currently, she is in uh, fourth grade uh, in her study. And she belonged to lower middle class as per modified Kuposami scale. So why I have to take this particulars? Because... In the, uh, the patient, the demographic data is important in some uh, chronic diseases. Uh, so her chief concern is uh, she has a progressively increased transfusion requirement for the last four to five years. As per history of present illness, the girl was apparently normal up to 16 months of her age. And then she was admitted for fever and diminished appetite and diminished playful activity for in nearby hospital. There she was treated with eye and blood transfusion. The parents were told by the physician that the child was suffering from blood-related problems and may require regular transfusion. There is history of abdominal distension for last four years and yellowish discoloration of eyes for last two years. And this discoloration is not present on the generalized skin surface. So the positive history is the abdominal distension that lasts for four years and the yellowish discoloration of the eyes. And the negative is quite important diagnosis. Um, no history of no history of passing mustard color urine or clay color stool. So why I'm clean because the so I and no color urine there is chance of muscular hemolysis because she is receiving repeated blood transfusion. So I am taking the history. No history of bone pain and another thing is passing polar color urine in the shikle cell, shikle crisis. There is no clue and you can get uh, AKI and get polar uh, color urine. And no history of bone pain. There is also history of uh, diminished appetite. No history of passing worms in stool. You have to rule out the parasitic infestation. No history of eating mud ice. That is known as pica. It's seen in the uh, iron deficiency anemia. No history of diarrhea, constipation. And for diarrhea, you have to rule out the malabsorption syndromes. And for constipation, you have to rule out hypothyroid because these things are linked to the anemia. No Liguria or anuria. You have to rule out the kidney related disorders. No history of dyspnea, tachypnea, and palpitation. You have to rule out the CVS related disorders, so the con um, uh, chronic heart disease. No history of bleeding manifestation. No history of visual disturbances, seizures, or weakness of the in case of sickle cell and uh, in there is a uh, with the stress, there is a occlusion of cell due to the the basis shapes are changed. Got lost in the various cells. So, in the CNS, you can get the visual distances, the seasons like features. And in pain, uh, uh, you can get uh, the bone pain, abdominal pain, no history of pain in legs, headache, and convulsion, no history of excessive thirst, eating, micturition. So, another thing is rule, you have to rule out the uh, uh, there is a deficiency of insulin or not. You have to rule out the diabetes mellitus. 
So all these things are important to rule out the patient positive symptoms. Uh, transfusion history, uh, she was regularly transfused with act RBC from the age of 16 months, previously one unit in every two to three months up to three years of her age. And then she received transfusion one unit per month up to five years of her age and two unit per month for last four years and sometimes three times three units every month. So, uh, so you can see that there is the increased requirement of the transfusion for the last four years, and the total barrier transfusion across 5400 ml, more than 5000 ml, every year. If you assume hematocrit 65 percent, if if you assume hematocrit as 100 percent, the pure RBC was 3510 ml. Transfusion reaction, another important thing, sometimes presence of chills with or without rigor with transfusion, and there is no allergic reaction. Her last blood transfusion was uh, 23rd August 2023. Another thing is past history. There is no history of contact tuberculosis and no history of any surgery in the past. So why I'm taking this history? Because in the uh, thalassemia or any uh, coronary hemolytic anemia patient, because she is receiving uh, multiple uh, units, multiple service units uh, in the past. So there is a tendency to develop uh, in these cases uh, uh, gallbladder stone. So there is no history of such thing that uh, open cholecystectomy or lab cholecystectomy. Or in uh, early history, no similar in families and the girl was not born in from consanguine marriage. So this thing is important because in some communities there is an uh, interrelated marriage. So the tendency to develop this type of disorder, autosomal recessive disorders is more. So the the from this family history, so such type of history. Both history and history it was a booked case, uneventful. A mother took IFA, no history of antipartite memories and no history of multiple gestation. Natal history uh, means the delivery history, vaginal delivery at 37 of weeks, cried immediately after birth, no history of admission to neonatal infancy. History of bleeding from cord breastfeeding started within an hour after delivery. So, natal history is not significant. Uh, natal history, no history of neonatal joint is exclusively breastfed for six months and continued for a year. Supplementary food given. History development and milestone actually good color performance. As we told, uh, we told in the patient party is in a now uh, fourth fourth year standard. So uh, she has a good scholastic performance. Immunization is this important. Uh, in this type of patient has a uh, tendency they are prone to develop infections. Her immunization is so up to date. Uh, she has up to date immunized as per national immunization schedule. So, first one of non consent is transmission since 16 of her age, it gradually descended and it declined. Next thing is clinical examination. So what uh, the first arrival that she first came on 14 June 2020. On she is passing faces uh, like man and frontal bossing. This type of the typical features of thalassemia are uh, there. And general survey, uh, um, there is presence of pallor, classic edema. Not present. Why I am taking this history? Because in general, in thalassemia patients, there is a tendency to develop congenital, uh, congenital, congestive heart failure because due to the due to the there is a hyperdynamic circulation and ultimately develop the congestive cardiac failure. So edema may be there in thalassemia patient uh, when the hemoglobin is level is too low, uh, three or two. So th this patient is uh, there is no limb neck vein is not palpable, neck vein not distended, not elevated. Liver uh, liver is palpable six centimeter from the right hand margin. It was not in the. Farming consistency, smooth surface, sharp border. 
and spring 12 cm from left costal margin. It was non tender, forming consistent, smooth surface, sharp border, and splenic knots appreciated. Why I'm taking this history? Because the, uh, the girl is the pediatric patient. On examination and in December month, uh, patient weight is reduced, uh, weight is increased to 2 kg, 25 kg. Uh, and now the pallor, there is no pallor, no icterus. A clubbing sinusitis edema not present, lymph node not palpable, leg fin non palpable. What we find is uh, the you can see the liver is uh, the liver size of the liver is elevated, is increased by one centimeter. Seven centimeter right margin and skin size reduced from 12 centimeter, it reduced to one centimeter. Now the growth that Cultured is by uh, in the academy of pediatrics. It's the height versus weight growth chart. So we can see the girl's height and weight are normal. Uh, it's just eight percent of the norm, normal standard height and the growth, the height and the weight. Laboratory investigations. So first with the see high performance liquid chromatography. So why we have to come with first time uh, CBC report. CBC report was 4. Point, hemoglobin was 4.6 gram per day, hematocrit 15%, MCV 49 femtoliter, MC is 15 microgram, MC is 28 gram per day. So you can see it's a microcytic um, hypochromic anemia. Why I'm saying? Because the reduction of CV mean corporate volume and the reduction of MCs and MCs. TLC, RBC number, RBC number is reduced, platelet and uh, platelet number, uh, platelet number are adequate, and REW is increased. So from this thing, we can see there is a high, uh, microcytic hypochromic anemia. So now the next uh, step is the HPA. This is the HPA so we can see the hemoglobin A, fetal hemoglobin, hemoglobin A, adult hemoglobin, and hemoglobin A2. Hemoglobin percentage is 23.9%. So it is quite high. The normal adult, you see, see the normal patient, the hemoglobin is that uh, your uh, 98%. And in hemoglobin F is just stresses. And hemoglobin A2 is below 3%. So if you see the graph, there is the uh, A F increase quite high, 93%. And A2 is 2%. And uh, this are uh, her parents HDLC. You can see the uh, it level is 14 percent and and her it level is so it is more than three percent. So they are carrier are the carrier. The is greater thalassemia minor. Okay. This is the stress of the HPLC report. Uh, so we can just see the hemoglobin responded, the baby is quite low and the EPA is increased because there is a compensatory mechanism. So in the hemoglobin, we have two alpha and two beta. And to reduce our absence synthesis is the beta globin. So we have to do some, um, our body just compensate by Increased production of the gene, gamma globin gene. So that's why the in the beta thalassemia major, HPF is increased too much. As per uh, IH report uh, that we done in our laboratory, her blood group was A positive. Uh, direct antiglobulin test auto antibody screening with three cell panel was negative, and RBC phenotype R1 R1 that means small cell negative and KL negative. So in the graph, uh, there is in the rising hemoglobin level with introduction of HBF inducer. We have, uh, as per our, we not have uh, we add some HBF inducer, that is hydroxyurea and thalidomide. I will talk in detail. So it's, uh, it's from 14 
protection of the ACV RNA, uh, the gastroenterologist department started to suppose of it and help us for it. Uh, and she's receiving uh, the tablets. And uh, after completion of the therapy, there will be another uh, ACV RNA detection after three months of the uh, completion of the therapy. So by conclusion, thalassemia is a multi system disorder management of thalassemia is a comprehensive approach with individual patients and with tailored disease. the transcription, patient plan management, and managing complications. So by using dual therapy or some patient with single leg wave induces therapy, we have to minimize the uh, the need of transfusion, and we have to uh, just uh, free the patient from the trans. Not only from the transfusion, we have to increase we out uh, increase the quality of the life of patient. Our take home message: uh, transfusion is not the sole treatment approach for transfusion dependent thalassemia. With addition of HVF inducers, agents can minimize not only the requirement of blood transfusion but also help to reduce iron overload and chances of aluminization and overall the risk of TTI. So HVF inducer, we have mentioned the thalidomide and the uh, hydroxyurea that uh, currently. Uh, applied in uh, most of the uh, hematologist or transfusion medicine specialist there uh, are doctors uh, so they in the multiple study this two drug but not only the this two others also they are just like sodium butyrate or azacitidine they are in the trial or so but the response is good in do this two drug hydroxyurea and thalidomide. So with this HVF inducer, not only we reduce the requirement of blood transfusion, we also helped. It also helped to reduce the iron overload, so we can see the de uh, decreased level of the ferritin and the chances of aluminization. Obviously, this is foreign blood, so the risk of aluminization is more, and the overall the risk of TTIs. Thank you. Thank you. We are really happy and excited to know that uh, Medical College Kolkata is doing a wonderful job starting out uh, on uh, transfusion medicine clinics. And it will. Um, uh, we are sure that it's going to be an example for others uh, across the country. Uh, if there are any queries from the, from the audience, you can unmute and ask. Sir is also there. So there is a query in the chat box. Uh, yes. Are you seeing antenatal patients who require IH workup also? I think that would be directly coming. You can. Yes, you can... they are the antenatal patients. Uh, antenatal patients uh, are usually directly coming to us, and also sometimes they are referred to us also if they are coming to our OPD also. It's not 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 that that they are not coming to us. Yes, we get cases. Recently, also you are managing one lady. I think she's uh, going for the uh, uh, very valuable uh, pregnancy. I think she has past history of uh, loss. So we are managing those patients also. The only thing is people are hesitant to open up the clinic, but actually NMC also declares that it's a clinical specialty. If you go to the standard assessment form, which I want to say, that there also you will see that special clinics by TM, the IHBT clinics, OPD, Fall indoor, that is also there. So I think it's high time uh, if across the country, if all of us take the initiatives, I think one day we will be able to establish the importance also in the patient management. Yes, sir. Truly. Yes, there, are, sir, there are some more so queries. I think... uh, two more queries are there. Uh, is this uh, OPD yes, yes. in collaboration with the clinical hematology department? Or we have a people... very strong clinical hematology department. No question about it. One of the uh, oldest hematology setup also, but definitely initially they uh, they were also in doubt whether we will be getting the patients or not. But now they have also accepted that our in our whatever is our we are doing that and they are doing their part. 
because hematology has two part that is non malignant and malignant mostly malignant is they are taking care of they are taking care of their day care also but those patients who are you know who, who require multiple aluminized having severe transfusion reactions which are not controlled by them they are also sending those patients not only from our medical college but also another hem hematology department in NRS Medical College, which is also nearby, they are sending those patients also to us for transfusion management. So that's 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 one of the thing I can say. That's a uh, that's an uh, I I feel it's an encouraging sign for us. Yes, sir. That's really encouraging. And there's one more last question in the chat box. Is bone marrow evaluation also done uh, through this OP or IPD? Actually, bone marrow evaluation, since I am telling, we have got a very good clinical and laboratory hematology set up in medical college, also in the other medical college also nearby. So bone marrow evaluation, we are not doing, till now we haven't done, if definitely it is required, we will send that, them to the hematopathology area for them. So okay, these sir. are some of limitations in my setup. That is, I don't have, yeah, you work in a very resource, frankly speaking, very resource board. Those who have came, they know. But still, we have to continue under any circumstances. We cannot give excuses that not opening this or not taking the initiative. So we am taking a small initiative, which I was initially also in a doubt whether I could be able to establish. But now I think things are going, till now it's a, encouraging that that much i can say it's too early for me but that much i can say that it's encouraging sir it will because be an eye for believe... it will be an eye opener for uh, all the people across uh, the country actually yeah. it will be emotional for me also to say when i was proposing that for the five or ten beds some of the people also told ki oh, well, you are beginning if your beds becomes empty in medical college, it is not desirable. The beds will go. Somebody will take care of those beds. But luckily, till now, uh, I haven't faced that situation. That was I can tell you. Okay, sir. So, are there any queries? There, you can unmute and ask also. So, because we are nearing the completion of the talk. Anybody else wants to share their uh, short experience with conducting or are they planning to start or anything like that? So I think there are no further... Sir, yeah, sir, sir. Uh, congratulations, of course. Uh, uh, it's a pleasure uh, that uh, you have taken the initiative. Yeah, Thank you very much. Yes, sir. And um, uh, sir, uh, we also would like to um uh, uh, so at least uh, try to go in the same path that you have showed yes all uh -huh. of us if we go across i think yes yes abhishek we can hear you yes yes sir so only yes, thing Dr. is uh, sir is government like uh, uh, mohf or somebody uh, i heard they are supporting especially these programs because uh, Sir, what we have realized is it's a huge thing like giving a phenotype match, blood, leuco reduced and all that, very difficult to sustain. So, is there any support from either the state government or any national bodies we can use? Actually, actually Dr. Vishek, when uh, we started, we got the support from NHM. They initiated okay. a fund of <clears throat> 2 lakhs only okay so uh -huh. uh, they they were also in a doubt that mm -hmm. but uh, nowadays two lakhs is you as you see but we are giving almost we are rationally yeah. judiciously using of course we cannot Correct. give that's our limitation to every thalassemia patient at times but uh -huh. nowadays we uh, we are uh, we are uh, we are using almost 200 units almost 200 units uh, of leukocyte depleted uh, red cells for these patients per month. Mm -hmm. So, and another thing is also it uh, maybe I, I haven't calculated 
if we use the transfusion judiciously, like what our uh, results are telling that hydroxyurea thalidomide, probably the requirement to some extent we can arrest. Sir, one is so, uh, drugs. Drugs I am fine. Uh, the uh, now that we have oral uh, anti-chelating agents and all that. Uh, my worry is yes. about the other part, sir. For example, uh, phenotyping donors to choose them once they develop all antibodies and or it looks like a very difficult yes. or a costly model to sustain. Uh, but uh, for these, uh, these patients, we are doing that regularly. We are doing that mm -hmm. for the, it's almost, I think almost, OPD and clinic, they are, you know, last two years, less than two years, just two years will be about mm -hmm. on April. So, but regarding phenotyping, this initiative, I think we have started from 2011 initially and full fledged was almost 2015-16 onwards we were doing. So that we are doing for these patients, not universal ones. Okay. Not universal Thanks. ones. We don't have automated oh. platform also. You are doing in semi-automated, but still you are doing that. Yes. Hope uh, the ICMR no, phenotyping project and other things comes in handy and uh, hopefully and, more and more centers can take it up. Yes. And also these judicial, because these are the people, you know, a lot of right. research occurs in oncology, hematology, that is onco-hematology. But for this thalassemia, sickle cell researches are poor and the patients are also very poor. So it is pathetic, those areas where these people, these children really were suffering. Now it's very, if I refer them to their thalassemia care unit, they sometimes say nobody touches their body. Well, they only get the blood transfusion and go away. That should not be. Exactly. What I can exactly. Say. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you all for your encouragement. And yeah. on behalf of Department IHBT, again, I thank TMA uh, Academic Society for giving us all the support for introduction of these clinical experiences to you. Thank you. Sure, sure Thank sir. You. Thank you, Thank you sir, you and the team for uh, sharing your experiences. Okay, then, bye, sir. And the entire uh, people who are joined also to hearing this interesting session. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.